It was just over one year ago that special counsel Jack Smith indicted former President Trump over his attempts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Then in July, a historic decision by the Supreme Court ruling that presidents have absolute immunity from federal prosecution for official acts. And now, once again, a new superseding indictment filed against Trump by the special counsel. So. What does this all mean? How could this potentially impact Trump's run for the White House? Joining me late tonight, Mark Reichel, a federal criminal defense attorney. Mark, great to see you and have you on. Good to see you again. Thanks. So, Mark, before we get into the details of this new indictment, I want to first have you talk to our viewers about the significance of the Supreme Court's ruling on presidential immunity and how that impacts Trump's case. Okay, first of all, it was it was it's watershed. Something like this has never come out of the Supreme Court before. We've never decided it in the history of the nation since 1788. We've never decided this issue. So they 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 found three areas. Number one, the core function, core function of a president. We just don't want to second guess that. But that's things like treaties involving the military and some of the other real big duties that are the core functions of the executive of the nation. The second thing are official actions. It's not core duties. Those are official actions because the Constitution itself just lists a few core duties. But the official actions, those are something that also get immunity, but it's presumptive. It can take a lot of evidence to overcome that uh, overcome that immunity, that presumption of complete immunity. And finally, number three, if they're not official acts, if they're not core acts, They are private acts. That's something there's no civil or criminal immunity for. The Supreme Court could not list every single action a president takes during the day and during the week and so forth as the nation's top executive that would be considered an official act. They left that for the lower courts. So this indictment seems like it's a slimmed down version. What exactly did Jack Smith do? How different is this version from the original? Two things. He had a new grand jury, a completely new grand jury. So the old one heard everything, everything, even things that weren't, you know, going to come in in evidence later at a trial. Yeah. This one, it was slimmed down and it heard just things they argue are either private acts or official acts, but they can, they, they've overcome the presumption to prove they were so far removed, so far removed from the official acts of a president that they're now private acts. They specifically went over and over by the, the fact stating in the indictment. First of all, removing any reference to the attorney general or official government actors besides the president and called him a candidate throughout the indictment, called Vice President Pence at the time a candidate. So the conspiracy they're arguing in this indictment was about a bunch of candidates for office. So how do you think this is going to stand up against scrutiny or or do you think Judge Chutkin is going to say that, uh, no, you know, this is not going to hold because of presidential immunity and he's immune from X, Y and Z? I think uh, I think Jack Smith has done a good job. It's a really difficult job to do. I think they're going to be able to proceed. They're just not going to proceed. They're not going to go forward until after we've decided as a nation, until the votes are counted. Mm -hmm. There's no way there's going to be a trial that takes place before then. You know, if you were on Trump's defense team, how would you defend him right now? What would be the strategy? I would do everything I could, number one, to delay it, obviously, for a variety of reasons. And number two, I would try to I would try to get Jack Smith to make something that's prejudicial in the court. okay, something prejudicial enough that is improper, that I would immediately appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court and again assert interlocutory. And that means in the meantime to say, oh, my gosh, I can't get a fair trial, at least pauses and consider it. Because otherwise, there's, you can't unring the bell. If I go forward with a trial, which we later determine is unfair, there's nothing you can do to unring that bell. So I think that's what I would do if I was representing the former President Trump. This case was uh, really important to the American people because it really touched on uh, the state of democracy in this country, the attempts to potentially overturn the results of an election. What exactly were the charges against Trump? How, many, uh, how much of those are still uh, seen in this new indictment? The same four charges are there. There's just new evidence, new theories that are used. It's still defrauding Americans of their vote, number one, defrauding Americans of their vote, basically. Number two and number three is obstruction of justice, specifically. And this is where they changed it. They said he specifically wanted them to get these to get these certificates. The actual physical physical certificates were put in boxes and taken out by the legislators when they ran out. This indictment now alleges Trump told these people and Trump wanted 
wanted to go in and have those taken. That's a new allegation. So that's the obstruction of justice is to take the certificates, the electoral certificates. And then finally, number four is a conspiracy to deprive you of rights and the right specifically to a fair election. So that's the fourth charge. They're the same, but they've come at them with different theories and different evidence. All private actors, most of this evidence says private actors did this and Trump did it in his private capacity. Specifically, like he went to his dining room table, left the Oval Office and made tweets, you know, giving directions and so forth. Not in the Oval Office. They're saying that's a private act. So where do we go from here from a legal, legal standpoint? There'll be some there'll be some pretrial motions and some litigation. I don't know if there'll be a hearing at all, a big hearing where we hear some evidence, yeah. like a pretrial hearing, you know, with evidence and so forth. I don't think we're going to get that. I think it's just going to be paused. Mm -hmm. um, I can see that, that Trump has a great argument to pause it. There's an informal rule that's been forever that within 60 days of an election, a major election, we yeah. don't file new charges against someone. That's going to be their argument here. Uh, but we'll see. This judge, you know, she's a federal judge. Federal judges have awesome power. She can say, look, in 35 days, I want to have a hearing about what evidence comes in. And that evidence can really inform the electorate and possibly change minds, possibly change minds after hearing some of this evidence either way. Yeah, 69 days left till the election. So we'll see what kind of impact this could potentially have. Attorney Mark Reichel, thank you so much. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you.